And the education CS Professor George Magoha says the government is willing to reopen schools, but the decision rests on the country's coronavirus inf infection rates and resources. Speaking during the COVID-19 conference with the governors and various stakeholders, Magoha said that the decision to reopen schools was not something he could do alone. According to the CS, it would cost the government at least one billion shillings to mask school-going children. What about examinations? Why have we not just opened schools to allow the, the student classes, uh, uh, standard eight and for four, to come back to school? The issue of equity and equality comes into play because in the standard eight, we have 1.2 million children waiting to take exams, while in form four, we have only 750,000. So I think that uh, we are able to cope to, uh, to get them to, to do exams. What then happens to the standard eight? Because we don't have capacity for them to go to the next class. Because even if, they, even, even if we were to use the capacity in form four, it will be almost 500,000 500, children less. These are things that must really be understood by, by one. And then uh, the most important thing that I would want to, to, to bring to a point here is that we are dealing with a medical problem. It is not political, it is not a professional problem. And this is a novel virus because even after my 42 years of being a physician, I have never seen a virus like this. Therefore, we must listen to what the physicians are saying. And up to now, the virus has been behaving in a particular manner. And we are starting to see that the incidences are coming down. Mm. And this is what we have said all the time, that even though we said we are close until 2021, it was not cast in iron or concrete. Mm. We said it will depend on the behavior of the virus and the information that we get from the Ministry of Health and our state of preparedness. So as we look, I've been observing very carefully, we're just about to hit 5%. It may look like we are flip-flopping. We are not flip-flopping. It is a virus that is flip-flopping. It is not possible for anybody to stand and say that we shall open tomorrow because those were Right, only the CS for Education, George Magoha, can say that it is the virus that is flip-flopping. It is not the government. That is the Minister of Education. And he says that uh, the reopening of schools is dependent on uh, the virus, whether the curve of COVID-19 in the country is flattening and also dependent on the advice that the Ministry of Health through the CS of Health, uh, Mutahi Kagu, will give to the Ministry of Education. So now let's bring in the ICPC Executive Director, Ndung Wanaina, joining us now virtually. Thank you, Mr. Naina, for talking to us here on KTN News Center. So, pressure on the government to reopen schools. The government is saying they will not yield to the pressure that they're being given, but instead the decision will be based on the curve of COVID-19 here in the country. Uh, thanks for having me this morning. First, I think I, 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 I have an advantage of having listened to the, the, the cabinet secretary when he was talking yesterday. But the questions that we need to ask ourselves first, three preliminary questions. Does the country have a comprehensive and a clear picture of the level of the spread of the COVID-19 in the country? Because where are we with the COVID? Two, does the government have a countrywide data that clearly shows that this is the pattern, this is the progression of the COVID? And finally, the third important question is, COVID has been with the community. In according to the government own uh, statements, has been the COVID has been the community for the last uh, five months. That's more than 150 days. What has been the suppression strategy? What has been the management strategy? How has that spread in the community affected children? Is there data that the government has on that? Then we come to the elephant in the room, which is, has the Ministry of Health, together with the Ministry of Education, have looked at the epidemiology of COVID to ch in children? Because it is only when you have that data on how COVID affects children, you can actually be able to make a very clear decisions in terms of how you want to approach COVID in children and even making determinations on school. Now, just, if you want to open school, 
Yes, please. Just before you continue, just expand for us your uh, sentiment about the ministry looking at how COVID has affected children, because I believe you're not, you're not talking about the infections, because when it comes to infections, we know that children have also been infected. Definitely, yes. I'm not refuting that. But the question is, do we have a data, a scientific data in the country that the government has corrected? And can it be able to give a country a breakdown of we have X number of children so far who has been affected by COVID. Do, do they are they do they have pre-existing conditions? Are they just the normal kids with no other ailments? What is the exact number? How are they widespread? How has it affected uh, them? Can the government because you, if you keep just talking and the government is not giving us a data that is is empirical that can be used, then it will be very hard for us to make a decision. And I want to give you a practical example. And Kenyans can listen to me on this. We have been following other countries, and these countries are in Africa. I'm not talking about European countries or America. European African countries, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and many of those countries which have open school graduate. And one of the things they have invested on is correcting information insofar as how children have been affected by COVID. And using that as a data, they proceeded to take specific measures in schools that has been enabled to enable those countries to gradually start opening their schools. So, so allow me to be the devil's advocate here. And let's talk about the concern of the government is that probably some of these school going children might be coming from families that have reported a case of infection and they are not sure whether every child will be safe once a school is reopened because this pressure is seriously mounting on the government to reopen. Yet again, there are some parents who are saying, even if schools reopen, I will not take my kid to school because I don't know whether my child's classmate or friend in school comes from a family that has an infected uh, case. The, the, the issue you are raising is exactly what the World Health Organization said yesterday, the, 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 the day before yesterday on their statement. They gave a cautionary warning that in terms of testing, Kenya is doing extremely bad. In fact, the number of testing has actually been reducing. Secondly, the contact tracing has equally drastically reduced. The point you are making is simply this. What has been the government uh, ability to conduct effective uh, testing and contact tracing? Because you cannot just assume that uh, uh, people are out there uh, people are infected, but there is no empirical data to show us how widespread is this disease across the communities. Then, and this takes me to how, what then would, would it mean for a government to be able to effectively open schools? First is to answer the first questions I raised. Secondly, is this, it is to make sure that the, in every school, they have put in place systems of daily screening. They must be able to have in place system that they can have a random testing of the kids. Administration of a case having been identified, there is a management process of that but, particular case. But that's now, not let's, one. let's talk about Step the reality. Yes. Let's talk about the reality on the ground, especially with public yes. schools, because even as the government is slowly reopening the country, its economy, and also when it comes to events, the hotel industry, there's something about social distancing and the capacity of people that should be within a specific area. That cannot be achieved in public schools like private schools. Public schools are crowded. But, but the question then would be this. How comes... Other countries in, within Africa, and we have the same conditions. In fact, some of them have even worse situation than us, but they have been able to gradually open their schools. If, in fact, if I make reference, in April, actually on April 8th, one of the proposals we gave was for the government to reprioritize and allocate funds to public schools to start putting in place healthy measures. What, why were we saying so? It is because, in our own understanding, COVID was going to be with us for long. It, because even if we get vaccine today, COVID will still be with us. So the, our proposal was based on three things. One, we needed to put in place a child-friendly infrastructure in school that ensures there is a widespread a system of screening, a, a system of testing, and case management. Secondly, 
you are putting in place systems that ensure the safety of a child while in school. And that way, you are putting in place systems that ensure there is a very limited movement of kids when they are within school. And that also means that, because I'm also realistic, we have so many children who actually move every day from home to school. So we must also ask ourselves, in terms of the safety of kids moving from home to school, what sort of measures do we need to, to have? And then we start to ask ourselves, what is our long-term plan? That is the proposal we gave in April. Mm -hmm. So we have ended up having six, we have wasted four months, no plan, no thinking through. We are still still at wait and see April. But, 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 but then I was about to ask you, just based on uh, children moving from one place to another, let's look at uh, children coming from the interior parts of this country, like the northeastern region, regions within the Rift Valley region, like Trukana. You know, the inner parts of this country, some of them don't even have good infrastructural system for education. How are we going to ensure that their safety has been put into consideration? That is why we put a proposal in the same statement we, with the proposal we gave in April that by that time our proposal was that the government should have reprioritized and reallocated funds and allocate sufficient funds to start putting those things. For instance, I have seen in most of these countries that are setting up, it, uh, have started gradual opening. One of the things they started doing is coming up with what you call preferred or temporary classes which do not cost a lot of money, and also their construction is local. For instance, suppose we diverted much of the CBF money, a government reallocates more money, and then, other than having the Kasim Mutani thing, and then we put it in school, it would have a massive impact on the how we would have put in place infrastructure in the school within the period we have wasted, because essentially we have wasted six good months without putting any measures in place. We can wait until January, and I can assure you one thing, there will still be no measures in place if you are not, for the last six months, taking any measures. All right, and, and lastly, as we wind up this conversation in a minute, is it just pressure for, you know, from uh, some parents? Because it's not all parents who are supporting this issue of reopen the schools. Is it pressure based on the children need to finish their curriculum and children need to transition from one class to another and uh, the feeling for the class eight and the form fours? What is the reason no. behind this no. pressure of the government to reopen schools? It is not a pressure. You know, a school is more than just running, reading and counting for a child. It looks at the health of a child. It is the well-being of a child. It helps reduce the stress of a child mentally, anxiety, depression, most of those things. So a school is not just a matter of running, counting, and all that. It is more to a child. Secondly, I can assure you this, we will have lost all the gains we have made in school. And most likely we lose a whole generation if we keep schools closed. We can assure you that most likely almost a third of the kids will never go back to school. And even the ones who go back to school, a lot of learning has to be done to get them into cash up. Then, at the same time, we are dealing with a massive problem of inequality, child abuse, a lot of early pregnancies, and all that. And I can give you an example. In Ghana, they, because they have opened us graduate schools, one of the biggest the problems they have identified is the number of girls who have not gone back to school. Why? Because of pregnancies, others are married, others have gone to other things. That massive loss, and already in Kenya we have that problem. So there is more in terms of opening the school than just a question about pressure to right. government. All if right. this government Mr. was responsible and competent, it, right. have, it would have you tried the six months, All right. put Mr. resources, Alina? and I would challenge members of parliament to All prioritize right. in in putting resources to schools All right. to accelerate putting those infrastructure Mr. Naina, we Thanks have a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. Naina. Uh, we have to wind up. Thanks, uh, thanks. We have to end up KTN News Centre. Thank you for your sentiments. The ICPC Director Ndungwa Naina talking to us about that pressure on the government to reopen schools. My name is Brenda Zeda Radido. I see you again at 10 a.m. Uh, for more news, making the headlines. So keep it KTN News.